Manchester has one of the finest portfolios of libraries anywhere in Europe. The one behind me, Cheetham's, is perhaps our most charming. It's special for a number of reasons, not least because it is the oldest free public library in the English-speaking world. In other words, this place behind has been open to the public, how very democratic, for more than 350 years, in buildings that are almost 600 years old. When you enter into these corridors, you enter into the Middle Ages, you're going that far back. The whole place reeks of atmosphere and antiquity. You can tell why the location finders for the Harry Potter movies thought this would make an excellent Hogwarts. In the end, it turned out to be a little bit too small. But the details everywhere are extravagantly gorgeous. Look at this doorway and the instruction it says upon it. Please ring. Let's follow that instruction. When the library was set up, each book was probably worth a man's salary. So security was of an issue. The gates are a little bit later, but to begin with, the books were chained to the shelves. And then later on, you were locked within, so you didn't take the books home with you because they were worth a lot of money. The whole collection is phenomenal. We've got books from the 1200s, uh, a book by Matthew Paris, one of the first histories of uh, Great Britain. We've got a first edition of the first ever dictionary by Samuel Johnson. We've got a first ever copy of the first ever edition of The Guardian, called The Manchester Guardian from 1821. We've even got more of the flim flam, the, the frippery as well. Here is a collection of Vanity Fair pictures and portfolios of the types of fashion gentlemen would wear. This from 1877, look at that beard there. That would be trendy now. In the bars of the Northern Quarter in Manchester, people would love that. They'd probably also like the little slogan at the bottom, the description here, which describes this gentleman as the apostle of women. Not only in this library do we have remarkable works and a remarkable building, but we also have historical associations, some of which is go as important as you can possibly get. There's a letter that I'm going to read here from a man called Friedrich Engels. Political scientists and political economists will know about him, but Friedrich Engels lived for 22 years in Manchester and his best buddy, his best mate, was Karl Marx. Uh, both German of course, Karl Marx lived in London, but Karl Marx would come and visit Engels for many, many hours, days, months. And this is a letter from Engels to Marx saying, during the last few days, I have again spent a good deal of time sitting at the four-sided desk in the alcove, or the bay window, where we sat together 24 years ago. You can get the books that Marx and Engels read out, because we have a record of those. There is a story that says at least half the Communist Manifesto was perhaps written in Cheatham's Library through the studies here. probably been something on this site for over a thousand years, maybe something Saxon, maybe a little Saxon fortification with between two rivers on high ground, so therefore it's easy to build a little fortification here. These buildings, the ones you see all around you, around here in this most gorgeous of courtyards, date from the 1420s and originally they were the priest's quarters for the Roman Catholic Collegiate Church of Manchester, but then, then Henry VIII decided he wanted to get a divorce, decided various other things, so the Roman Catholic Church were ditched, the cathedral, later cathedral, became the Church of England Church and these buildings were sold, first to the Lord of the Manor and then after the English Civil War in which Manchester supported Parliament always radical Manchester, always supporting the left field side generally throughout history. Then Humphrey Cheatham, this benefactor, he bought these buildings for use for charitable purposes. He was a businessman back in the 1600s, very clever businessman, very astute. And when he died, he bought these buildings with his will and then he put the library in it, but also a school for poor boys, which is now converted into a school of music for very talented individuals. Humphrey Cheatham was probably not the life and soul of the party from what we can gather, but certainly had his charitable works to do, of which this library is one of them. And if you look at the coat of arms, if you look up there, you'll see, for example, here in the central motif, you'll see how, very cleverly, this is his coat of arms, everything's balanced on books to show that, wooden carved books, to show that this is a library. And then there are other details, such as this one here, which is a pelican pecking its breast to give its own blood. 
And that motif is a very Christian one. In other words, it's a symbol of sacrifice, the parent sacrificing itself for its children. So it's very Christian. It's all about charity, in other words, because this was a charitable institution. My favourite one, my absolute favourite one, is at the far end there, which is a cockerel crowing. Now, there's various interpretations of this, but the one I like most is that it's a cockerel at dawn going cock-a-doodle-doo. And it's saying that if you have books, if you have learning, and remember this library was open to, to the public, it was free and public to anybody, but if you have books, if you have learning, if you've studied, if you have education, you are wide awake. And therefore you can free yourself from superstition, from other people's ideas trying to make you think like they do. So education makes you wide awake. What a wonderful sentiment for this charitable library to be based upon.